thank you all uh, for coming this evening to the Environmental uh, Law Careers Panel. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Kaibel, I'm one of the environmental law professors here. Um, we have a very interesting panel today. I think it will be interesting for a number of reasons. What, one, because I think it will give um, the rest of us here uh, a sense of really the, the full spectrum of what the uh, environmental bar is in terms of environmental practice, because we have representatives here uh, from um, public interest, sort of nonprofit environmental organizations, which will give you a sense of sort of the public interest sector. We have representatives from a regulatory agency in terms of working uh, in that capacity for the public sector, and also an attorney from one of the uh, leading environmental uh, firms here in San Francisco, which will give you a sense of the private sector. And I think when you think about environmental law as a career, um, part of uh, understanding what that, that question is. Uh, is understanding uh, that spectrum in terms of private sector, public sector, and public interest sector, and understanding how they interrelate. So I'm hoping that um, through the presentations today and some of the discussion that follows, uh, we'll be able to get a better sense of that. Um, I wanted to start by uh, thanking some of the co-sponsors for today's event, uh, which include Golden Gate's Environmental Law Society, Phi Alpha Delta, uh, Legal Fraternity, Law Career Services, Golden Gates Environmental Law Journal, Golden Gates Environmental Law and Justice Clinic, uh, our Student Animal Legal Defense Fund chapter, our Center for Urban Environmental Law, uh, as well as, uh, I think I mentioned alumni services, as well as career services. So, uh, you didn't come here to hear me speak, you came here to hear our presenters, so I'm gonna turn things over to them uh, in a minute. Uh, I'll give some brief introductions to them. The, the way we're gonna run the panel is, uh, I've asked each of them to give sort of uh, somewhat shorter remarks uh, initially, maybe in the order of five, six minutes, we'll scale it back a little bit from what I said initially, um, and ask them in their opening remarks to um, touch upon, however they see fit, sort of at least three questions. One is to give some sense in terms of what is their job, uh, in terms of the, the substance and scope of the work. Um, secondly, uh, what kind of experiences in law school uh, or in terms of internships were helpful um, constructive for them in terms of their career and their experience. And third, uh, in terms of providing advice to our students out there that are uh, considering or looking to enter into this field, um, what recommendations that can they make uh, in terms of um, you know, finding the work you want, the job you want in today's um, competitive legal market. So all of our presenters today, interestingly enough, have uh, different connections uh, to, to Golden Gate. Um, our first presenter uh, is going to be uh, Tim Eichenberg. Uh, Tim Eichenberg is presently um, Chief Counsel for the San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission, BCDC. Uh, before that, he worked uh, as an attorney for the California Coastal Commission and also for the Ocean Conservancy in Washington, D.C., formerly known as the Center for Marine Conservation. Uh, Tim holds a law degree from Washington University School of Law in uh, St. Louis and a postdoctoral fellowship in marine policy from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute um, in Massachusetts. Uh, our second presenter is going to be um, Robert Buzz Hines. Robert is an alumni uh, of our law school and has, has served as an adjunct professor here as well, teaching environmental law. He is a partner with Farella Braun and Martel in San Francisco and former chair uh, of their environmental law department. Uh, he represents uh, clients uh, in a number of uh, compliance and litigation enforcement actions uh, involving such issues as cost recovery related to hazardous substances, natural resources damages, uh, and other hazardous waste matters. Um, prior to his position with Pharrell, Ron, and Martel, uh, he was a trial attorney with the U.S. Department, U.S. Justice Department's uh, environment section. Um, and he also clerked for the Honorable Martin Spence, United States District Court Judge for the District of Hawaii. That's a nice place to have a clerk. Um, next presenter is going to be, uh, so Tim's connection to Golden Gate, uh, there's, there's a number. Um, Tim serves on the advisory council of our uh, new Center on Urban Environmental Law, CUEL. Uh, many years ago, Tim uh, helped sort of co-direct uh, a conference that we put on, uh, on overfishing, uh, entitled MTCs and Tim played a big role in that, and Tim has also, uh, in the past year, contributed an article uh, to our Golden Gate Environmental Law Journal on the issue of sea level rise and uh, BCDC's response to that. Um, next presenter uh, is gonna be Brent Plater. Uh, Brent uh, is currently a lecturer with San Francisco State University's Environmental Studies Program. He's also served 
as a visiting assistant professor here uh, at Golden Gate University, where he was actively involved with our Environmental Law and Justice Clinic. Uh, and he's also served as Bay Area Director for the Center for Biological Diversity, a um, group that's very active in terms of public interest litigation, both here in California and around the country. Uh, he's also currently serving as Executive Director of the Wild Equity Institute. And our last presenter, who we've been spending a lot of time with over the last year, uh, is Layla Monroe. Layla is a staff attorney with the Oceans Program with the Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC. Um, she is a graduate of uh, Georgetown University Law School and did her undergraduate work at Georgetown also with their School of Foreign Service, focusing on international politics and security. Uh, and prior to working at NRDC, she worked as general counsel uh, for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, Administration, NOAA, which is uh, very involved uh, in ocean and coastal work. Um, Layla's connection to uh, Golden Gate, uh, one, we, it's hot off the press, someone's probably holding a copy somewhere. We just uh, published our uh, symposium edition of the Environmental Law Journal right there. You see a copy there. Uh, dealing with offshore energy issues, and we had a wonderful article related on that topic. And then also, and I'll make a plug for this at the end too, uh, on November 11th, we're going to be hosting uh, a conference here uh, at the law school on the same topic of offshore energy uh, after the BP spill. It rhymes, right? Offshore energy after the BP spill, wind, wave, and the push to drill. It's like a haiku, if you say it. <laughs> I know it's a haiku, but it works. Uh, so she's also going to be a, a presenter for us at that conference. So with that, uh, I'll start with Tim, and I'm going to sit down during the presentations and um, after we sort of go through those. My thought is, um, let's uh, try and get through the initial presentations, the shorter ones first, then take a round of whatever questions you may have, uh, and then also put some common questions to them, and we can get their responses and take some questions again. So we'll sort of have two opportunities so you don't have to hold your questions. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thank you, Paul. Um, hello, everyone. Um, well, another connection that I have to um, Golden Gate is that, that uh, BCDC, the agency that I work for, is a very small agency where we have 40 staff on our, uh, there. But we have two intern, two legal interns a year, both of them from Golden Gate, and both of them are fabulous this year. We have Kate Ita and Dan Balick. Dan uh, is a graduate, he's waiting for his uh, He's waiting for his bar results, and he just got snatched away from us. He got a job, so there is hope out there for you guys that are looking for work. Um, so what is my job at BCDC? I'm the chief counsel, um, and uh, we do policy. The, the thing that I really like about working for a state agency or any government agency is the variety of things that you get to do. And um, at BCDC, I work on policy issues. Recently, we just adopted uh, policies that deal with climate change and sea level rise in San Francisco Bay. It's a two and a half year process. Um, we amended what's called our Bay Plan, which is the plan for the Bay. We didn't have any policies on climate change before um, two years ago. We just had one, we mentioned it a couple of times and said people should think about it, but we didn't have any policies to deal with it. And now we do. And now I'm preparing to get sued over those policies. So I'll be get work on the policy side and I'll probably work on the litigation side. Um, in terms of litigation, we do work with the Attorney General's office, which is always really nice. And we have a, a 1,000 lawyer law firm at our disposal um, who represents us before, uh, before uh, courts. And we work collaboratively with them. We work on getting the administrative records together and involving them in, the, in, in contentious things like the climate change policies before they become litigation so that they become very familiar with the facts when we end up going to court. Right now we're in litigation over a landfill expansion that we approved in the Potrero Hills area of the Sassoon Marsh. And uh, working very closely with the AG's office on that. So um, we just prepared the administrative record for that and we have a hearing in February on that, probably, probably a hearing in February on the opening briefs. Um, we also work on permitting issues uh, as legal Council for the BC, for BCDC, we meet with our regulatory staff, the people that write the permits that BCDC approves uh, almost every day, and talk about permit conditions. What comes up all the time is whether we can actually impose public access. Our mandate is maximum feasible public access. It's all over our statute, but just because it's in state law doesn't mean that we can impose it whenever we want to. Because there's a very inconvenient thing called the Fifth Amendment which prevents us from doing it unless we have a nexus and a rough proportionality, as most of you know that have taken con law or property law. 
And also there's the Lucas case where we can't have a total taking, we can't completely regulate everybody's property so that they have absolutely no use on their, on their property anymore. So we have to <laughs> consult with our permit staff about the conditions and whether they're reasonable or not. Um, other things that we do is we work on legislation. Um, I'm the one that's supposed to be monitoring legislation that's going on in Sacramento. I'm not in Sacramento. I'm here, so it's kind of difficult to do. But I do a searches, you know, and people call from various uh, committees in the legislature um, asking about what ECDC's views are on certain pieces of legislation. There's always somebody who's trying to exchange land in the Bay that's uh, currently burdened by the public trust and would like to take it out of the public trust so they can use it for non-trust purposes. And, and if they do that, which is something the legislature can do, they have to exchange it for other land that's in the, or near the Bay. So we're constantly monitoring whether these exchanges are fair exchange uh, for the public trust. Um, and then there's the enforcement uh, the things that we work on as uh, legal counsel for the commission. People are, usually, or not always, but sometimes they do things without a permit and we don't like that. So we have to go enforce uh, our permit requirements on them, uh, bring them. We have a, an enforcement committee, so we have administrative enforcement powers. We can actually impose fines administratively and then they can be appealed to court. And so we have a pretty strong enforcement mechanism. We have prepared violations to present uh, to our enforcement committee and then defend those if they get appealed to the courts. So those are the things that we do. Um, what are some of the useful experiences that I've had? I'd rather talk about the fun things that I've done, which I think is much more useful to me than the useful things that I did in order to get where I am today, which is right here in front of you. So um, somebody asked me the other day, like, what, you know, what fun projects are you working on? And I was thinking about a lot of the stuff like getting beaten up over climate change wasn't really that much fun and getting sued for approving a landfill, well, that wasn't so much fun. But in my previous jobs, I got to go to Cuba to work uh, with the Cuban government on uh, regulating their, um, their coastal areas and developing their coastal management regulations. Spent a week there working with uh, committees and devising their coastal management regulations, and that was a lot of fun. I got to staff, when I was at the Ocean Conservancy, I staffed a Cuba Oceans Commission. We traveled to, uh, and to develop policies to protect the oceans that could be recommended to Congress. And we worked with the chair of our committee, is now the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta. So I got to spend about a year and a half with him going to Hawaii, Alaska, um, Monterey, New York, Charleston, um, and several other places. And developing, having public hearings to develop what we recommended to, um, to Congress as a, an approach to dealing with um, some of the problems that the oceans are facing from climate change and overfishing and pollution. That was really fun. Um, teaching I found to be really uh, stimulating. I teach a course in the summer. I'm a summer faculty at Vermont Law School. I teach ocean and coastal law there. I found that to be really useful and a fun experience. It's kind of like going to the gym. Teaching is very difficult, as I'm sure Paul knows. Um, it's rigorous, it requires you to work three times harder than the students, ten, sometimes ten times harder than the students to keep ahead of them, which kind of is like working out at the gym. It's not that much fun, but it's really good for you. You learn things much better when you teach them than when you're actually in school studying them. Um, publishing, I find to be very helpful. I enjoy the articles that I've written with, uh, for Paul's journal. I've written, um, I've edited a book on ocean and coastal law and policy for the ABA, and that's sort of become a, a text for the ocean and coastal law in the ocean and coastal law field. I found that to be very helpful. I've published in other law reviews and, and, and more popular magazine journals on various topics. I found that to be very helpful and also very instructive in helping me develop an expertise in these areas. Um, other things that I really enjoyed doing, um, international work, I found to be really wonderful and fun and stimulating. I went to Africa in 2002 and worked on the World Summit on Sustainable Development and then came back and wrote an article for Paul's Journal on fish, international fisheries and what that, that was Rio plus 10, that was supposed to move the climate change and uh, international uh, agreements that they developed in Reno, um, move it forward 10 years after that was negotiated. It was moderately successful, it was really successful in the oceans area. Um, but uh, in terms of setting goals, but of course, international law is a little weak on the enforcement end, so I'm wrapping up right now. And uh, what do I recommend for you, uh, for you to do?